Jackson von Schreck. You're welcome. Now, there's not much going on as far as trending goes. I mean, after all, it's just stuff I don't feel like trying to cover up, like some new music video. Or just someone apologizing or someone showing off their house. I don't care this week. You know, I've done enough apology videos. I've done enough house videos. So I want to discuss some other better news that came out today. Well, I lied. came out yesterday, but I'm reporting it today. Normally I would have the video out earlier, but I'm doing it this time of day because, well, I just came back from the dentist. Long overdue. Had to get caught up, you see. <laughs> and now I can make a bright smile. Don't worry, Tony. We'll get to you soon enough. Let's just get a bear with the background noise. It is still New York. Quarantine or not, People are still gonna go outside and be loud. The big news I'm talking about right now is Batman! Batman! Oh, yes. Well, okay, let's be fair. It's really about Ezra Miller's Flash movie, but it's really about Batman. And how can you go on a day without talking about the Batman. The Batman who is a rich boy whose parents were gunned down and then he was bitten by a radioactive bat and now he eats fruit flies and gets himself caught up in women's hair. Quite the entanglement. <laughs> And of course there's, of course there's brutality on his criminals while fighting corruption in the police force. <laughs> All right, sure. Ezra Miller's Flash, ah, savior of the universe, has been worked on for some time. It really has. But things just kind of kept getting away. Like the box office numbers of Justice League. And I don't know why, it wasn't that bad of a movie, but we will get the Zack Snyder cut. And honestly, I don't think this director's cut will be like any normal director's cut. I think it's more of an underlying backdoor remake of Justice League, but done more correctly. Sorry, Joss Whedon. We all liked Buffy the Vampire Slayer for what it was, but it's all the same. Same gimmicky bullshit. Yeah, as Firefly was fun, but you pretty much know one thing and one thing only, and you have a certain style. But Zack Snyder, he brings the characters down to be more grounded, more riveting, I think. And see, that is the problem I've always had with comic book fanboys who try to critique movies. Their problem is that they say the Marvel films are best because it's fun, but Let's be real, DC should never try to be like Marvel. That's the spunk I liked about DC, is that they were more honest with their characters. The characters to me had more of, oh, let's just say, realistic problems and ways of handling. Things cannot be made with background 80s music and call it a day. No matter how hard we try copying that Suicide Squad. But yes, Ezra Miller's Flash. Honestly, I'm surprised that Ezra Miller is still going to be the Flash after what he did to that woman. <laughs> You know that infamous moment with him putting his hands on that woman's throat. But to be fair, if a woman approached me in such a hostile way in a bar, clearly knowing I'm not interested, I'm choking that bitch out too. No means no, ladies. So I'm glad he is the Flash. Yes, I actually did like his flash. It's a little naive and more Wally West than Barry Allen, but that's more of the writer's fault. They can't seem to tell the difference between their flashes. So we're going to continue the movie of The Flash, and it's going to be like Flashpoint Paradox. And what is the news? Well, <laughs> we already knew that our old Batman, Michael Keaton, was going to make an appearance. And he was going to reprise his role as Batman. But now we find out that Ben Affleck is back to being the Bat. And why shouldn't he? I mean, he is probably one of the better Bat 
Batmans out there. Sorry, Christian Bale, we love you, but you kept going on with a gurgly voice. I'm Batman. Like, first movie was fine because you were using it to intimidate the criminals, but I swear you were just going on just to troll us, and that just hurts my feelings. Michael Keaton was a great Batman, maybe even is still, but Ben Affleck really put his heart into it. The man clearly loved being Batman. After all, he's not really done anything else before being Batman. Before Batman, what else was he? The little boy from Voyage of the Mimi. Now a huge uh, acting record, Ben Affleck. I'm kidding, of course, he has other movies he's been in. Like, Reindeer Games, Jersey Girl, Geely. But you know, I just knew that something was up with Warner Brothers in DC. I really did. The fact that they did the Infinite Crisis through the CW and even had Ezra Miller make an appearance as his Flash speaking to the Grant Gustin Flash. I knew they were slipping something in there. I mean, let's be honest. This is the new era we're living in. Era where we have multiverses. We have Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, and we have that Doctor Strange movie coming out with the multiple universes, and even Avengers Endgame opened that up, and now DC is really using that as a plot device, which honestly, it's kind of smart when you think about it. I mean, after all, Let's put it to you in perspective like this. DC was ahead with their stuff for a while, especially the 90s. Marvel was about to be bankrupt. They had to sell their rights to multiple different movie studios. But DC stuck with Warner Brothers all the way through. They didn't really need to make that many movies. All they had was Superman and Batman. So with Marvel licensing out their characters to different studios, it was easy for DC to just take it easy on their movies. Pretty much using Batman and Superman as their one-two punch. On occasion, you'll have Supergirl or Steel, but Batman and Superman were the only ones they needed to produce movies of. Any other characters, like Wonder Woman Flash, never really mattered to them. They had the market in their pocket. Things were looking good for them. And going into the new millennium, yes, we had Marvel's X-Men, but they were done from one studio. We had Spider-Man from another studio. It was all spread thin. And DC decided not to compete against that. They were still riding the success of Batman and Superman through television. Shows like Smallville kept them afloat. They didn't need to compete, no. But then suddenly, Marvel decided that they would start incorporating a universe. So they started making their money back and they started collecting their heroes again so they can assemble their Avengers. And they decided to do this throughout 10 years. Slowly pacing, slowly crawling, and DC, they were just busy releasing the side characters like Constantine or Catwoman or Jonah Hex, but they were too confident with themselves because Marvel was getting successful while DC started to sweat. And then they decided they might want to make their own universe. They attempted this with Green Lantern. That didn't take very well, did it? So while Marvel was years ahead with their superheroes, DC started quickly crapping out their movies. Much of them I really enjoyed. But the numbers and the rest of the world did not agree with me. So Marvel prevailed and DC fell behind. But here is the genius of the writing of the multiverse. Now that we have the multiverse, DC and Warner Brothers can say, oh yes, all those movies like the Christopher Reeve and all the Michael Keaton films, they're actually in continuity. We can pretend that all those decades were leading up to this moment. They were just in other universes, that's all. Just over there. You're paying attention to here, but they're really over there. 
And now we have the Flash who will bring the universes together. Which is the perfect timing too because DC is starting to tremble a little bit by slipping away by making that Joker movie that had nothing to do with the DCEU. And now you have Matt Reeves, that bastard, his the Batman movie was supposed to be a prequel with Ben Affleck, but Warner Brothers would not let Ben Affleck direct. And Ben Affleck, of course, didn't quite see eye to eye with Matt Reeves. That's why he left the project. So now The Batman is going to be its own thing. I wouldn't mind it so much considering I like the layout and the ideas and I don't really have a problem with Robert Pattinson himself. He's given bad roles, but he's a pretty good actor. But the idea of having multiple films and multiple franchises from the same studio of the same character, it just... It's just too wrong. But now we have the multi-universe. So when something goes wrong, we can just blame it and call it some other Earth that existed. And here we are. Ben Affleck is now joining with Michael Keaton in Ezra Miller's Flash movie. Yes, it's a Flash movie, not a Batman movie. But the stipulation is this will be Ben Affleck's last film. I hope he's lying, just like he is lying about the fact that he wouldn't return, but he did. Oh, let's face it, everyone needs money and everyone has a price. So, let us hope, let us pray, and let us stay away from... Oh, I don't know, I just wanted to rhyme, but I just... Look, Matt Reeves sucks, all right? But I can't wait to see the Batman. It looks pretty interesting. So let's sum up. Ben Affleck, Michael Keaton, it's an Ezra Miller's Flash movie. And we can assume that everything that ever happened in DC or ever will happen is all canon now. Including Steel, if that's what you want to claim. I am Team Ray Fisher. If Joss Whedon was a bastard, get him out of here! No matter, I've always been a fan, just like Tony when our dad brought us to see Batman. We've been the biggest fans since. Bigger than all of you. <laughs> Batman is our favorite, and we are the kings of knowing Batman. We've even met Adam West, so we are your kings now. Bow to us. After you like and subscribe. Hi, I'm Addison Von Schreck. You're welcome. Thanks for watching the recent video here. Be sure to like, subscribe, and also ring that bell to be notified. And while you're at it, tug, turn your head and cough, and you'll be finding out about some other videos coming very soon. Until then, check out my videos, and if you must, check out Antonix Maximus' videos.